Hey, yes, before we do anything else, I'm aware I haven't uploaded in two weeks. This video was supposed to come out last Thursday, but ended up being sick last week, and so it's coming out now. To save time, there's not going to be any extra intro. I just want to get right into the video. So without further ado, we're looking at Endeavor Silver. Because we're doing that, it's because, as I'm sure you guys have seen out there recently, precious metals, especially silver, have just been getting hammered down as of late while energy's been going crazy. And of course, you want to buy stuff when people hate it. So we have Endeavor Silver once again, trading ticker EDR on the Toronto. Toronto Stock Exchange and EXK on the New York Stock Exchange. They're currently trading at $4.02 per share with a market cap of $695 million with a PE of 17.11 and a price per ounce of $8.61. I'll have to look at more silver companies to determine if that's a good price per ounce because I'm more used to price for pound of uranium which is of course very different from the an ounce of silver. Now very quickly I want to touch on this. We just hit 3 inch subscribers recently really fast to have 200. That is really cool guys. Thank you guys so much for that. The other thing I want to note, though, is that still a lot of you guys who are watching are not subscribed. So if you are not subscribed right now, make sure to go hit that subscribe button. Maybe we'll be able to hit 400 really soon again. Well, we're not hitting 400 again, but hitting a new milestone really quickly, right? But let's continue with the video. So stock chart here, we've seen the last six months, it's just been getting decimated. It's had nothing but fall further and further and further. And it's even a noticeable drop when you look at the max. You can see it looks straight down when you're out on the max chart here from this peak earlier in the year. Now, I just have a couple slides pulled out of their presentation like usual. This kind of just goes over their ESG stuff here. So we can see 25% reduction in injury rates, and they're making sure to have safety training and all that kind of stuff going on. They, of course, want to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, all that usual ESG stuff you see. Uh, I mainly want to focus on the right side here. This is their first half 2021 production and revenue. And so we can see that they are still majority in silver for when it comes to the amount of revenue generated from each metal. So that's good to see since silver has much more potential to grow a lot more than gold since gold is near an all time high, whereas silver is at under half of an all time high. So, of course, that's good to see that it's mostly silver and not mostly gold. And we can see from each of their mines, we can see that it's fairly concentrated in just two of their mines. But when you look at lots of uranium companies, they might have one project for the entire company. So this is still a lot better than some of those when it comes to diversification. Now, this is their first mine, and I'll be going a bit more over it in just a second. It is 80% silver, 20% gold for the mine plan. They expect their mineral reserve to increase in 2020 from additional exploration they're doing as well and now their next mine it is the opposite 80 percent gold 20 percent silver and they're of course improving operational financial performance and all those good things their next mine here once again 80 percent gold 20 percent silver it is leased from the mexican government and of course is scalable as they discover additional mineral resources and this is only 5% of consolidated production at the moment. And they, of course, are exploring it to help expand the mine. This is their development project. The three above are all currently operational, and they say it's going to be their next core asset with 60% silver and 40% gold. And so they propose the life of mine will be 12 years. They've got two defined ore bodies here, and they've invested 30 million so far on the project. And so far, they have reserves of 88.8 .8 million gold equi or silver equivalent ounces, sorry. But we'll be looking a bit more in just a second. Now, this is some of their exploration projects. 100% silver here. Uh, same thing, more exploration projects going all in here. Applied for drill permit for this one. And they initiated drilling in Q3 and Q4 2019, respectively, for these two. This is just to recap. So they have three currently operating mines with a development mine, along with some additional exploration and discovery projects. For their shareholder information, we can see that 11% is held by the GDXJ and GDX, as well as by the SPTXX TSX composite, and 2% by Fresnillo. For larger companies like this that are already profitable, I'm not as concerned about CEO ownership as I am with the small uranium stocks, but we can see here it doesn't list that, so it's likely low, of course. And we can see for share dilution, they're really good, only 160, 176 million shares of saying, which is really good compared to a company that might have five or 600 million and be around a similar market cap so really good on the capital structure here in my opinion all right so i've got their first mine here i'm not even going to try and pronounce it this is one of their operational mines they currently have a mineral resource so measure plus indicator plus inferred not proven plus profitable of 
29 million ounces of silver, and there's a 0.5% royalty on there, at least from what I could determine from their technical report, with a grade of 337 grams per ton. Now, I'm not sure what a high grade was at first, but Wall Street Silver over on Reddit was able to help me out, so let's hop over there. So this is the most helpful answer I got, and he had just let me know, okay, this is more so going around the economics, but he said in open pit mine, you want about 70 G slash T, and if it's a worse area, 35. Now, if you want underground mine, 200 to 400 so presumably we're gonna set the line of so yeah at least a few hundred is going to be high grade from what i understand here also looking at some of these in a youtube video that someone on that same post had sent me and it says right here 430 g slash t in 2005 down to 185 in 2015 likely lower now same thing from 636 to 257 and then from 3506 all the way down to 98 and so from that i'm gonna assume you know a few hundred 337 like we see here i'm gonna assume that's gonna be high grade something else to note is this is also their first ever project and there's also gold in this deposit but which will be found in the DCF but isn't shown here and it's is an underground mine so in correlation with that reddit post I saw I'm just trusting everything on that guy uh, that this is this is high grade the underground works with 337 and there's also a 30% tax here and from what I know Mexico does seem to be better than some of the other silver regions like I think that was in Peru or Argentina or something like that where there were talks of nationalizing the mines now of course they've already spent their initial capex because the mine is up and running but in 2016 they had spent 15 million and 2017 24 million so i'm just going to take the average of that to apply to each year in the dcf now this is taking their 2017 estimated price per ton and converting it to price per ounce or cost per ounce i should say so seven dollars and 66 cents to get an ounce of silver out of the ground and taking their mineral resource divided by the yearly production, we can see that it has just under 10 years left of production, realistically. All right, so here's their second project here, and we can see that this one's also operational, underground mine, currently producing, though the grade's a good bit lower at only 157. That one seems to be definitely on the lower grade side, especially for an underground mine, but there is also some gold in here, once again, not shown in here, but will be factored into the DCF. Once again, for these, we are going to be factoring the DCF the average of 20 2016 2017 with an opex of $15.43 per ounce which is converted from here and it looks like they could run this mine for about 27 years if you divide the mineral resource by yearly production speaking of mineral resource let's talk about that there's almost 10 million ounces of silver in here 0.5 percent royalty once again and once again like i said earlier does seem to be on the lower side for great now onto their development project and you might be wondering wait oh sorry <laughs> back here it said three but thing is that's not in the operational section of their website so maybe they sold that project between this presentation coming out and when i'm making this video or something like that this wasn't on their website so I'm not sure what's going on there, but now we're on their development project. There's 45 million ounces of uh, silver in the ground with a 2.5% royalty on it, and there is a grade of 219.7 grams per ton. So at least that does seem to be on the higher side, and because it is planned to be an underground mine as well. Of course, like the rest, also gold here not shown, will be factored in the DCF. There is just about $100 million of initial capex with a total of $159.5 million of capex. Now there's an opex of $10 and 65 cents per ounce and they expect to construct the mine from march 2022 to september 2023 so about a year and a half and produce for 10 years looking at the total of all the exploration and development projects and the gold and the silver everything like that we can see that there is about 80 million ounces of silver at an average grade of 240 grams per ton with less than half a million ounces of gold with a very low grade of 1.455 grams per ton a high grade for gold is about 8 to 10 g slash t and so once again note they have seemingly two producing projects maybe three i'm not sure what's going on with their website there and the development project and they have additional exploration projects that were of course shown earlier Earlier. I don't know why that says not. That's not important. And there's also, of course, little amounts of lead, zinc, copper, that kind of stuff not being factored into the DCF. So, speaking of DCF, we've been talking about this whole time. Let's get on to the fair value of Endeavor Silver. All right, so looking at the discounted free cash flow, I set up here with a couple different scenarios. And so, something to note though is because I'm again running late in this video, as of October 6th is the current value, but it's only as of October 1st is the current gold and silver spot price. But precious metals aren't super volatile, so they are still trading at about those same 
prices today. Or by the time you're seeing this, hopefully. Hopefully they haven't continued to fall. But that's not important. First up, when we look at current silver spot price and current gold spot price, they look substantially, substantially overvalued. Though, of course, I use 50% CapEx and OPEX inflation with a 10% discount rate. So they are, in um, they're not even conservative, but they're pretty much unfair numbers in some ways. Now, looking at $30 silver and 2000 gold, I think these are both very reasonable. We still see decently overvalued and at $50 silver and $2,000 gold, we see that there is actually a good bit of upside here, about 25%. And looks like, oh, I haven't replaced that number there, but that's not important. This number I know is correct. But so we're just going to do a thing called uh, perfect. But uh, they are currently trading at, to be fair value, at $45.68.5 silver spot price and current gold pricing to what they're currently trading at right now if they were going to be trading at fair value right now. And if we're going to be looking again at the $50 silver spot, 2000 spot, there's a good bit of upside. If you think the silver and gold are going even higher than that, there's of course greater upside. And if you think 50% CapEx and OPEX inflation is ridiculous, which it is, there's of course even greater upside. That's of course up to you. You should always do your own research as this is not financial advice. Anyways, we are going to be ending the video there. That's the outro. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.